Dear Commissioner and uh, Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to uh, this uh, closing session of our first day of the fourth conference, which we also call the closing conference uh, of the European Year of Volunteering. We have uh, already had uh, four uh, very interesting and uh, active uh, sessions uh, during the day, uh, which are based on the recommendations uh, and the working groups of the uh, Alliance. We have talked about uh, the enabling environment, we talked about empowering, recognition, and also about uh, uh, awareness raising around the values and importance of volunteering. This session uh, will welcome two keynote speakers. Uh, I have the pleasure <coughs> to the left of me to introduce to you the European Commissioner, uh, Kristalina Georgieva. <clears throat> responsible for international uh, cooperation, humanitarian aid and crisis response and also in particular uh, also responsible for the new European Voluntary Humanitarian Aid Corps. We also have, and I would like to welcome uh, uh, Minister Ostrowska, uh, who is uh, Under Secretary of State in the Polish Ministry of Labor and Social Policy. But before we listen to our keynote speakers, uh, we have again, uh, as we have also a ceremonial sort of handover uh, of this uh, document that has been prepared by the Alliance over the full year, together with uh, many active uh, volunteers and voluntary organizations. And I will therefore uh, uh, call on Gabriela Chibiku, who is the project manager of the Alliance uh, 2011 for the European year. Please. Thank you. So back in 2007, the idea of EYV 2011 took momentum, and almost one year ago to the day, in a snowy Brussels, your colleague uh, Commissioner Redding launched the year for us. One of the objectives of this year has been to develop the policy agenda for volunteering in Europe, and a large part of the grant that we received from the European Commission has been used for this purpose. And I think everybody now has a, has a copy of PAVE, and you will get yours in a moment, uh, Mrs. Gogieva, over there. PAVE stresses the need for a partnership approach between different stakeholders in volunteering. And I can assure you this is not an empty idealistic statement, but this is one which is based on the actual experience of 2011, where not only have civil society organizations worked increasingly closely, but that we in turn have worked in close partnership, especially with the European Commission, but also with the other <coughs> EU institutions, in particular the European Parliament and the Economic and Social Committee. We've also worked, thankfully, with the member states, with the national coordinating bodies, and also with the social partners across Europe. We believe that PAVE provides a roadmap for the continued development of this partnership approach. And I'm only able to present to you this copy of PAVE because of the concrete input of more than 100 people, more than 100 experts in volunteering from across Europe who contributed to our working group process. I can't invite them all to be part of this, uh, this handover process, but I would like to invite the co-chairs, I think most of them are sitting here, to join us, uh, and we will give you this copy of PAVE.
you. Yes, and with this, I would like to give the floor to our commissioner, uh, Mrs. Kristalina Georgieva. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all the work that has gone into producing PAVE. Um, dear Madam Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and more than anything else, uh, dear volunteers, uh, we are bringing to a close the uh, uh, 2011 European Year of Volunteering. And uh, like every time we are just about to go for our New Year Eve, when we celebrate with our families and friends uh, the New Year, when we remember all the good things and all the difficulties we have overcome, then what we do is we look forward and we solemnly declare our New Year's resolution. And this is what we will do this evening with you today. And also you will work on that New Year resolution tomorrow. This uh, year, 2011, has been an exciting journey at a difficult time for Europe when we Europeans more than ever need to bring our people together to face together the difficulties of today and to pave together a better future for us and for our, our children. And in this year, the Alliance and the volunteers of the Alliance have worked relentlessly to bring together our civil society, our volunteer organizations, and to connect communities all across Europe on this very important theme, on the theme of what it means to contribute to our communities, to our societies, to our future. Uh, I can report to you something that uh, actually is very exciting, that uh, as of now, we are clicking close to 2 million hours being registered as volunteer hours. And why is this so remarkable? Because when my team started working on this uh, closing speech, and it was only a week ago, the number of hours was 624,000. So we checked the website on the way to here, and it was above 1.7 million. Uh, by the end of the year, I'm sure the number will go even uh, further up. And just imagine how many unregistered hours of volunteering there are below this peak that is, on, uh, that is registered. And uh, more than the hours of volunteered registered, what you have done was uh, to prepare the policy agenda for volunteering in Europe, which you just uh, uh, gave me. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first of its kind. And I'm really very honored to receive it on behalf of the European uh, Commission. Uh, I saw next to me the uh, uh, vice chairs. May I now ask uh, everybody who has been involved one way in, in or another in the work of the Alliance to please raise your hand. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, you, you, really, you really have a very good reason to be proud of yourself. We in the Commission are very grateful for what you have done. Uh, and uh, we are particularly grateful that uh, this year of volunteers has also included a roadshow, knocking on the door of every member state, making the year of volunteer owned by everybody. I personally have discussed volunteering in Budapest with humanitarian organizations in the design of our own corp, uh, in Rome, in the Vatican, where uh, the Pope actually spearheaded a meeting on volunteering as part of the European Year of Volunteering, and a few days ago in Sofia, in my home country, when the road uh, uh, show stopped there. 
And those were only a small part of all the events that were promoted by, by my colleague, uh, Vice President uh, of the Commission Reading and her team uh, and the task force. And what I want to do now is to ask you all for those people who have gone a number of times the extra mile to make the air a success, the, the, the members of the task force, to, to ask you to give them a big thank you. So, John, John, Macno Mac Mac John McDonald. Where is John McDonald? Get up. And now, the team, the task force, everybody from the task force, get up. Who are the people here? Well done. Best. I guess the, the rest of the team is working and they, and this is what they should. <laughs> Very good. Um, and if it is one thing I would remember of all my stops and my, all my engagement with the year of volunteering is how important volunteering is for us Europeans. Uh, and I keep repeating it, if volunteers were to form a nation, a country, this would have been the biggest member state with 100 million population bigger than Germany, bigger than Poland, and certainly bigger than Bulgaria. And also what I learned is that uh, volunteering has value not just for the people that are being helped by volunteers. It has value for, for the volunteers themselves. It helps volunteers find themselves, learn about themselves, and create an additional social capital that we need so much, especially when the time is tough. Volunteering helps us to have better social cohesion, to have better communities. And it is also a pathway to help especially young people on uh, their way to employment. It does add skills. Uh, and now I, I learned something. How many are Polish in the audience? Okay, it's for our Polish friends. Zmieniają świat i siebie. We make a difference in the world. We make a difference in ourselves. And this is what volunteer, volunteering uh, does. Uh, so when the uh, economic outlook is uh, bad, volunteering is a way to build up solidarity and lift up the spirits of our populations. Uh, uh, surprisingly, this is least needed here in Poland because Poland is the best performing country of the European Union. And Minister, can I, through you, express our admiration for what Poland has achieved? Um, and it is so very good that it is exactly in Poland, on the background of this success, that we are closing our year of uh, volunteering. Uh, my point, the, the, what I want to share with you is what I learned in addition of the fact that we are 100 million people, what I learned uh, in my journey in, through, through the year. First, what I learned is that while we can be very proud that there are so many Europeans that volunteer, we also have to recognize that volunteering is uh, not equally spread across our member states. There are member states where a very large proportion of the population volunteers, and there are member states where this proportion is uh, much smaller. The champions, where 40% or even more of the population volunteers, uh, Austria, the Netherlands, Sweden, the UK, followed very closely by Germany and Finland and Denmark and Luxembourg. These are countries where volunteers contribute a big uh, uh, share also of the GDP. But then we have the rest. Uh, Poland is among the countries that are somewhat better off, but, but way below the 30% uh, in Germany, 13.2% of people volunteer here. And then we go to the bottom, four countries in the bottom, where volunteering is 10% uh, uh, or less, and my country, Bulgaria, is among them. So we need to ask ourselves a question. Uh, why is this happening? Well, when we look at the countries where volunteering is a smaller proportion of the population, a vast majority of these countries are the new member sta states. And in the new member states, there are two things, one very much in common and the second one a bit less uh, so. The first one is that in the new member states, for my generation, volunteering was mandatory. 
and by being mandatory, it became not so very attractive uh, to us. And I would tell you, I, I will remember for as long as I live, my first uh, volunteering, being sent on a um, uh, student brigade. I don't know whether the Mr. Minister had this experience. Uh, I, I, in my case, I was sent to a, to a brigade in a food processing factory in Bulgaria, where in terrible conditions we worked as basically free labor. And the outcome of uh, this brigade for me was first, I never, ever at the product of this particular food processing factory. <laughs> but second, I also tried to, and successfully, I must say, to uh, kind of duck volunteering in this mandatory uh, sense. Uh, well, the second reason for many of our new member states, uh, but also for some of the other countries that are in the smaller proportion uh, category, is that the economy there is uh, tough, and it is tough for people to be able to volunteer. But also, there are some good, there is, the second thing is a good news. When we look at uh, the countries where volunteering is less, we find that in these countries, the majority of volunteers are young people. And we know that when you become a volunteer as a young person, then you volunteer through the rest of your life. So there is a good chance that fortunes will be changed, but that takes me to my, my third uh, uh, lesson, that these fortunes will not be changed unless there is a concerted effort in legislative terms, in policy terms, in organizational terms, to make it easier, more, more visible, and more, more valued by society for people to volunteer. And I also learned that for that to happen, to make more people volunteer, we need to understand that, that different people volunteer in different places for different reasons in different activities. And therefore, whatever is done through legislation, through a policy, through inclusion, it has to reflect conditions and specificities of different uh, countries. And for this reason, what we can report today is that DEAR volunteering did put into gear in many of our member states the uh, capacity to retain the spirit of the year through national coordination bodies uh, as a single point of entry for volunteering in, in every country, but also through legislative initiatives. In our country, in my country, in Bulgaria, when we were closing the year, it was under the auspices of a new law for volunteering to, to, to be drafted and then, of course, passed uh, via the uh, parliament. Uh, and we also, in the Commission, as you know, we have adopted a communication on volunteering exactly with this purpose in mind, not to let the year to be a one-shot event and then the spirit of uh, created by you uh, to evaporate, to disappear. It is also fair to say, and I, and I heard it uh, uh, interestingly enough very strongly during the uh, discussion in the Vatican, that volunteer organizations must be empowered and that the quality of volunteering must be improved through better support from professionals and through better training. So the year of volunteering is leaving us with three uh, big uh, uh, teams in this respect that we need to keep raising awareness of volunteering, that we need to better measure the value of volunteering, uh, therefore have more reliable data, and that we, make, we have to make sure that competencies and skills that are generated through volunteering are recognized, uh, uh, such as the uh, volunteer corp we are building. It has to be also a place where skills and competencies enhance people's uh, experiences. So let me say a couple of words on these three themes. On awareness, uh, we actually find that people don't know much about volunteering in their own communities and, and countries, uh, especially those that are lower on the uh, percentage list. And uh, for this reason, we need to make it uh, possible for that message to be spread more, maybe included in official training, uh, in, in, in materials uh, in universities and schools. Uh, but also for the poorer member states, there has to be a way for volunteering to be more affordable for people who are on the, on the lower end of the income uh, 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 scheme. And so we know that 
some of our member states have figured out ways in which the private sector and the public sector can partner for volunteering to be more accessible. Uh, second, on information. This is the part that I found fascinating because, uh, of course, we have a little tendency uh, that uh, what we cannot count, we consider that it doesn't count. So to overcome to this tendency, this year, John Hopkins and its partners from the European Volunteer Management uh, Project found a solution to measure volunteering and the result is incredible. The, the result is that we can now say that volunteers create a value in society larger than the transportation sector. That's incredible and yet not very well known fact. A fact and obviously it has to be communicated more. And finally, gaining skills. Uh, in our, in my area of responsibility, what we are committed to do is to create the volunteer corp, the humanitarian corp, as a place where uh, we are filling gaps in volunteering. For example, there aren't enough volunteers in resilience, in disaster risk reduction. They are more in response, but less in resilience. Uh, but also to, to make sure that volunteers do get professional training for humanitarian work uh, so they can effectively be included in, in humanitarian actions. And that goes across all uh, types of volunteering. Why I'm so keen on the humanitarian corp? For one very simple reason. We live in a world where the frequency and intensity of natural disasters is dramatically on the increase. And also conflicts, although not more frequent, are severely tearing apart communities. The demand for humanitarian assistance is growing much faster than the resources we can provide. And there, there is a huge scope for people with big hearts and the commitment to a better world to be, to be engaged for which we want to give them a platform through, through our uh, volunteer corp. Uh, we launched this year pilot project, three projects, with Save the Children, the Red Cross Movement, with voluntary service overseas, uh, we have already the first volunteers deployed, and actually there is a, a girl from Wroclaw, Anna, who is now in Tanzania. And if you're interested, you can follow the stories of these volunteers on my uh, webpage. I intend to report on their, you know, share their experiences uh, through it. Uh, so next year, what is my New Year resolution? My, my, for next year. My New Year resolution is that next year the Humanitarian Voluntary Corp is going to be up and running. And I have a plea for you. We are struggling to find a good name for this corp. The name that is given by the Lisbon Treaty is European Voluntary Humanitarian Aid Corp. That creates the acronym EVHAC. Those of you who like it, stay quiet <laughs> because <laughs> that's a name I really want us to, to shake up. Uh, so we will be running, again, it will be on my uh, uh, webpage and on the uh, uh, ECHO, on our humanitarian service web webpage. We would be ru running a little competition for a name. Uh, please join it because we have to come up by the time we legislate and my new year resolution is fulfilled, we must have a better uh, name for the corp. More exciting, a good buzzword. So, voila. <laughs> this has been my year of volunteering and my new year resolution has been just framed for you. Uh, we know that there is a huge potential in volunteering and we must make sure that we don't lose it as we close the doors tomorrow of this year. We can connect it to 2012, it is year of acting aging, so for the uh, more mature population of volunteers to which I belong, this is an appropriate year to continue. Then in 2013 is the year of citizens, and of course a very good platform to connect to volunteering. But volunteering is such a tremendous value in societies that it should go in 2015 and 16 and 17 and hopefully when we go year after year we would see 
uh, the numbers of our volunteers going up and up and up. And I will finish with a kind of a small anecdote from the Sofia year of volunteering. When we were closing, uh, the uh, closing was in a small um, area of our National Congress of Culture, sort of under the, under the staircase, not, not the most prestigious part of the uh, um, uh, <coughs> of the building. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we are there. And of course, when I arrived, first I felt a little bit sad. And then I said to myself, hey, we only have 6% of the Bulgarians volunteer. This is the place we deserve. And we end it with the promise that it would not take long before we take over the biggest hall of our National Congress of Culture. And this is where we should be meeting in every and each of our member states. Thank you and good luck. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Commissioner, uh, also for leaving us with uh, a few challenges uh, for our New Year's resolution, uh, for a new name to the, for the Humanitarian AIDS Corps, and also the challenge to continue to recruit more volunteers. It's been said before, if each one of the present citizens who are involved in volunteering could recruit just one more person. That is already 200 million, so it's not a big, uh, a big job, I think. Uh, I would like to uh, hand over now and give the floor to um, the minister, uh, Mrs. Ostrovska, who I believe will uh, speak in her mother tongue. So if you have your uh, earphones, not earphones, earphones, Available, please put them on the headphones. Pani komisarz, szanowni państwo, z wielką radością witam państwa w Warszawie i dziękuję Komisji Europejskiej za ten wielki honor, jakim jest możliwość goszczenia konferencji podsumowującej dorobek Europejskiego Roku Wolontariatu 2011. Był to, już jak wspominała pani komisarz, rok bardzo pracowity, obfitujący wiele wydarzeń, konferencji i spotkań. W ciągu minionych 12 miesięcy wszyscy dokładaliśmy wszelkich starań, by wolontariat stał się jeszcze bardziej widoczny i ceniony w budowaniu aktywnego społeczeństwa obywatelskiego. Działania promujące wolontariat podejmowane były zarówno na poziomie europejskim, krajowym, jak i lokalnym. Jestem przekonana, że synergia efektów działań podejmowanych na różnych szczeblach przyczyniła się do bardziej horyzontalnego wspierania i rozwijania wolontariatu. Podczas polskiego przewodnictwa w Radzie Unii Europejskiej od początku widzieliśmy swoją rolę jako inicjatorów i promotorów przedsięwzięć, które podnoszą świadomość na temat wyjątkowej wartości aktywności wolontariackiej dla rozwoju Europy. W tym miejscu chciałabym serdecznie podziękować prezydencji węgierskiej, na której dorobku zbudowaliśmy wiele podejmowanych przez nas działań w obszarze wolontariatu. W gonie przedstawicieli wszystkich państw członkowskich Unii Europejskiej wypracowaliśmy wspólne dokumenty, które będą drogowskazem wyznaczającym nam dalszą drogę promowania i wzmacniania wolontariatu. Mówię tutaj przede wszystkim o konkluzjach Rady Unii Europejskiej na temat wolontariatu w polityce społecznej oraz konkluzjach Rady Unii Europejskiej na temat roli wolontariatu sportowego w propagowaniu aktywności obywatelskiej, które stanowią wyraz uznania ze strony wszystkich państw członkowskich Unii Europejskiej dla wolontariuszy i ich wysiłku. Konkluzje znakomicie uzupełniają się z przyjętym w tym samym czasie komunikatem Komisji Europejskiej w sprawie polityki Unii Europejskiej i wolontariatu na temat uznania i propagowania wolontariatu transgranicznego w Unii Europejskiej. Wyrażam nadzieję, że dokumenty te przyczynią się do podejmowania pogłębionych działań ukierunkowanych na rozwój wolontariatu w Europie i poza jej granicami. Szanowni Państwo, jednym z celów Europejskiego Roku Wolontariatu, jaki został przed nami postawiony w decyzji Rady Unii Europejskiej, 
było tworzenie sprzyjającego otoczenia dla rozwoju wolontariatu. Głęboko wierzę, że udało nam się rozwinąć pozytywną, korzystną atmosferę dla rozwoju wolontariatu zarówno w Polsce, jak i w całej Unii Europejskiej, a efekty naszej pracy będą widoczne w przyszłości. Miejmy na uwadze, że choć rok wolontariatu się kończy, nie wolno nam zaprzepaścić tego wielkiego kapitału, jaki wspólnie wypracowaliśmy. Doświadczenia, jakie zebraliśmy, posłuży nam do dalszej wytężonej pracy nad poprawą istniejących rozwiązań prawnych i instytucjonalnych, wzmocnieniem organizatorów wolontariatu, a także szerzeniem wiedzy na temat aktywności wolontariackiej i możliwości, jakie ze sobą niesie. Tak naprawdę to przyszłe lata pokażą, w jaki sposób Europejski Rok Wolontariatu zakorzenił się w naszej świadomości, w jaki sposób i w jakim stopniu wprowadzimy w życie zapisy konkluzji, komunikatu przekazanego przed chwilą na ręce pani komisarz rekomendacji Aliansu Europejskiego Roku Wolontariatu oraz innych dokumentów kierunkowych wypracowanych w tym roku na poziomie europejskim, krajowym, regionalnym i lokalnym. Fakt wypracowania tak wielu dokumentów dotyczących teraźniejszości i pożądanej przyszłości wolontariatu przez przedstawicieli wszystkich sektorów świadczy o głębokim przekonaniu nas wszystkich, że wolontariat można i trzeba inwestować zarówno czas, jak i pieniądze. W dobie kryzysu ekonomicznego, któremu w wielu przypadkach towarzyszy także kryzys wartości, aktywność wolontariacka jest swoistym spoiwem, spoiwem, które łączy realizację naturalnego dla większości ludzi dążenia do bycia potrzebnym z równie podstawowym zapotrzebowaniem społeczeństwa na aktywność obywatelską jego członków. Pamiętajmy, Szanowni Państwo, o przyszłorocznym Europejskim Roku Aktywności Osób Starszych i Solidarności Międzypokoleniowej 2012. Obchody tego roku będą dla nas wielką szansą, ale też i dużym wyzwaniem. Wszyscy mamy bowiem obowiązek dołożyć starań, aby rozwiązania wypracowane w trakcie roku wolontariatu miały swoją kontynuację także podczas przyszłego roku i przyczyniły się do popularyzacji idei wolontariatu w tej grupie wiekowej, a więc także do aktywizacji osób starszych i wspólnej aktywności młodzieży i osób starszych. U nas w Polsce ta grupa, podobnie jak pani komisarz, jest dotknięta syndromem przymusowego wolontariatu w ochotniczych chówcach pracy, więc też pokonanie swoistych barier związanych z, ze zmianą pewnych postaw i spojrzeń. Czas podsumowań w naturalny sposób jest także momentem na wyrażanie wdzięczności tym, którzy przyczynili się do zbudowania tak wielkiego dorobku Europejskiego Roku Wolontariatu. Raz jeszcze chciałam przekazać pani na ręce Pani Komisarz głębokie wyrazy wdzięczności dla Komisji Europejskiej za starania, jakie zostały włożone w uczynienie roku jak najbardziej owocnym. Szczególnie dziękuję Pani Dyrektor Irwie Tiweus oraz całemu zespołowi zadaniowemu, zadaniowemu do spraw Europejskiego Roku Wolontariatu z Panem Johnem McDonaldem na czele. Podziękowania za wielkie zaangażowanie przekazuję także wszystkim organizacjom pozarządowym, i społecznie odpowiedzialnemu biznesowi, którzy dbali o wysoką jakość i dużą skuteczność podejmowanych na różnych szczeblach działań. Dziękuję Aliansowi Europejskiego Roku, który szczególnie wsparł polską prezydencję, opiniując wstępne projekty konkluzji. Na zakończenie szczególnie ciepłe słowa wdzięczności chciałabym w imieniu mego kolegi, który jest krajowym koordynatorem Roku Wolontariatu, ale niestety dzisiaj nie mógł teraz przybyć ze względu na prace parlamentarne, i prosił mnie o przekazanie Państwu słów wdzięczności za to wszystko, co zrobiliście Państwo dla Roku Europejskiego Wolontariatu. Drodzy członkowie Międzysektorowego Zespołu Roboczego do Spraw Europejskiego Roku Wolontariatu, serdecznie dziękuję Wam wszystkim jako zaangażowanym, twórczym ludziom, jak również Waszym ministerstwom, organizacjom pozarządowym i firmom. Szanowni Państwo, cieszę się, że mam okazję wspólnie z Państwem podsumow podsumowywać, a także dyskutować o tym, jak powinniśmy kontynuować Europejski Rok Wolontariatu. Liczę, że wymiana myśli i doświadczeń przyczyni się do wypracowania trwałego dziedzictwa tego roku, tak by nasza praca przyniosła w przyszłości bogaty plon i serdecznie zapraszam do współpracy w następnym roku, gdzie planujemy szereg różnych przedsięwzięć związanych z popularyzacją wolontariatu wśród osób starszych i ze wskazywaniem im tej drogi jako naturalnej drogi po zakończeniu kariery zawodowej do szukania swego miejsca i bycia potrzebnym, potrzebnym nam wszystkim. 
Dziękuję bardzo. Wszystkiego dobrego. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Minister Ostrowska, uh, for uh, these nice words and also for uh, uh, making the bridge over to the next year. And uh, I'm not sure that that came out, but uh, the Minister Ostrowska is uh, actually responsible for the coordination of the next year, the 2012 year of active aging and intergenerational solidarity. So I think that this is a very good moment where we can pass on sort of the torch uh, between uh, this year and uh, into the next year. And we are uh, all confident that it will uh, continue to be a very good uh, cooperation and work uh, between everyone who's been engaged in this year and with the ones who will be engaged in the coming year as well. So uh, I think that what we have been said and what has been said by the two keynote speakers, this is not the end of the year and that will also come out clearly tomorrow uh, when we have the real closing day. Uh, it is actually a call for a beginning uh, as we will look more carefully through the recommendations and deal with them. Uh, each one of us, I assume, in this room at our level and in our uh, capacity. So uh, uh, with this, I would like to thank very much uh, Madam Commissioner and Madam Minister uh, for your keynote speeches tonight. And uh, also, of course, again, uh, the whole alliance and uh, Gabriela Civico for uh, this document. And I don't know if it's my uh, duty to say anything about the rest of the evening because the day is not over. Or is that you, John? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good. So while, while the VIPs uh, make their way to their next engagements, I'll give some housekeeping messages to the audience. Yes. A round of applause while, while we depart.